Namaste everyone. Business current affairs depict a very interesting scenario. While on one side everyone agrees on the relevance, but uh, sometimes we are not able to include them in our regular classroom sessions. While at times uh, students refrain from reading the business news because uh, they do not understand. So let me share my um, own experience. I started reading uh, business newspapers about 25 years back. and in the beginning i could not understand even 5% of the contents of the financial dailies partly because the language was tougher and partly because it was uh, difficult to form a core group of students to discuss the issues today the landscape has changed and not only the news is available on so many platforms including videos talk shows but the awareness about the merit of current affairs has gone up one of the best financial newspapers live mint has revolutionized the market with newspaper contents backed up with uh, excellent online contents including live shows videos discussion forums uh, etc so i would strongly recommend including the current affairs in the classroom and this would energize the students other than this some fortnightly sessions followed by current affair quiz with some prizes or certificates could also be considered so in fact some institutions have uh, special student clubs which take up activities and panel discussions with some element of simulated role play which could be carried so as to make the things interesting for the students now we as teachers may consider to announce this towards the beginning of the semester or trimester that a set of activities would be organized to improve acquaintance of business current affairs among the students even student assignments could be based on clubbing some uh, recent events and expression of their views and original ideas could be encouraged now let me take up some of the business current affairs uh, stock market is showing bearish trend for the last few weeks but uh, it has witnessed an uptrend in the last few sessions uh, should you be worried uh, the most important thing uh, first that while the indian stock indices fell in the last few months but we did not underperform the global markets shanghai composite and the hang seng have dropped by about 17% from their two year high while kospi is down by 18% ftse and dax by 8% and sensex is down by just 4% from its recent high of 40000 points so even if you exclude the last session gains still the drop was not worse than ftse and dax and on the date the drop from the peak for sensex is not as bad than what has happened to the nasdaq a uh, state of monsoon global trends and slowdown in the some sectors seem to be the key reason for fii is going on selling mode but our long term growth for india the potential remains intact and the commitment for the 5 trillion dollar gdp target by 2024 makes india an attractive destination so pursuant to the market friendly announcement by our finance minister and great response by the us crowd and the president to the visit by our prime minister the markets have jumped by 8% in the three trading sessions which is very encouraging so dear colleagues i trust uh, you may agree that here students usually ask if market is good for investment and we as their teachers can answer by mentioning that the stock investing should be seen as a long term exercise and taking this as the guiding principle you may built up your answer to the query you may also point that fii's are not only investors in stock markets and uh, apart from that the domestic investors are also there let us move to some of the latest uh, quarterly results starting with state bank of india sbi reported a net profit of rupees 2300 crore 
for the June quarter compared to net loss of uh, 4,800 crore rupees in the year ago quarter, largely due to lower provisions and higher other income. Now, while SBI's total provisions more than halved on a year-to-year -year basis from approximately rupees 19,000 crore to 9,000 crore in the June quarter, its other income increased 20 percent to rupees 8,000 crore. And moreover, SBI's net interest income, which means the difference between interest earned and expanded, moved up by 5 percent to rupees 22,000 crore. And another good thing that the net interest margin, which we call as NIM, uh, rose by 6 basis points. In backdrop of this news, we as the teachers can teach the concepts like capital adequacy, NIM, operating profit margin, etc. and the students are likely to respond better. Another quarterly result uh, we can analyze is of the PNB, Punjab National Bank, which reported a surprise profit of approximately 1000 crore rupees for the quarter ended June 30 because of the drop in the provisions. So, the bank had reported a loss of 950 crore in the corresponding quarter of 2018. Now, interestingly, the analysis in one of the polls uh, uh, had projected a loss of rupees 350 crores for PNB. Some negatives are that asset quality of PNB deteriorated with the percentage of gross non-performing assets that is NPA uh, rising to about 16.4 percent against 15.5 uh, percent on the quarterly basis. Net NPA also increased to 7.17 percent. In backdrop of this, teachers can teach the concepts uh, like uh, expected versus actual results and impact of NPA. We can also tell the students to analyze results announcement and the immediate impact on the stock prices from which we can link lessons in security analysis course. Now, let me take up uh, a result from FMCG and here we find that Marico, the popular FMCG company reported 21.6 percent jump in the Q1 consolidated profit to rupees 315 crores against uh, 260 crores in the previous corresponding quarter. Uh, revenue for the quarter grew about 7 percent uh, to 2100 crore and now its focus is on health foods, premium health nourishment and now targeting at um, 20 percent uh, plus CAGR over the next 5 to 7 years. Now, one more plus point is that the international business, if you see, the company expects to have a good growth while maintaining the operating margin level of about 19 percent. So, in this backdrop, we as the teachers can teach the concept of CAGR and the impact of operating margins. So, friends, we may also throw some challenge to the students like what are the key variables that would drive the Q2 results of Marico. Give a few days to students uh, so that they can come up with their thoughts in the classroom. After analyzing the results, now let us uh, see the US-China trade issues and the impact uh, of these issues. Now, US President Donald Trump has uh, abruptly triggered the trade war with China, announcing recently that he would impose a 10 percent tariff of about 300 billion dollars on the Chinese imports, which are currently not subject to import duties. And now, uh, the new tariff war will be there and uh, this will be applicable from September. Now, as you may be aware that another 250 billion dollar in Chinese goods are already subject to 25 percent US tariff. So, it is high tension time and Shanghai composite index has fallen by about 17 percent from its peak level of 2018. And this evidence is that China has lost lot of money due to the US actions.
Now, the question is how these changes are going to impact India? Now, India's share of world exports have uh, recently uh, rose to 1.71 percent in the first quarter of 2019 from 1.58 percent in the fourth quarter of 2017 and this is as per the data compiled by uh, Bloomberg. The share of every other economy amongst Asia's 10 biggest exporting nations fell in the same period. Now, trade tensions between US and China have given India an opportunity to ramp up the exports to both the countries. Uh, this is as per uh, a gentleman Ajay Sahai, who is Director General and Chief Executive Officer of the Federation of Indian Export Organizations. Now, India's exports to the US grew at the fastest pace in the six years in the year ended March 2018, while exports to China have surged up by 31 percent, the second highest annual pace of growth in more than a decade. And th this is as per the data from Commerce Ministry. Uh, their Council for Leather Exports uh, Chairman P. R. Akil Ahmed said that the trade war will help India uh, increasing the footwear exports to the US and India's footwear exports to the US currently are about US dollar 300 million and the Chinese exports to the US are US dollar 11 billion. So, even if we get 10 percent of this, our exports to the US can grow by four times. All in our uh, corporate uh, need to do is to look for ways in which we can benefit from the current turmoil, but having said this, it is not easy. In this backdrop, teachers can introduce tariff and non-tariff barriers and opportunities for Indian exporters. They may also encourage students to find ways in which India can benefit from the US-China trade war. Next, uh, let us move to the recent budget. In the union budget, uh, the government has focused on incentivizing MSMEs, infrastructure development and boosting rural and the agrarian economy which will fuel the growth in manufacturing sector going forward. Tax proposal to lower 25 percent uh, corporate tax rate uh, applicable to companies with turnover up to rupees uh, 400 crores and increasing import duty on select product augurs well for the government's uh, uh, make in India program. Now, one gentleman Sambitosh Mohapatra from uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers has mentioned that the aspirations and the support of manufacturing new age technologies, solar, PV, uh, electric vehicles, storage batteries and the charging infrastructure will go a long way in making the energy sector fit for future. It can be uh, transformational for attracting uh, private investment to the sector as well. Anita Rastogi from PwC has viewed that the key theme of this budget uh, has been a focus on ease of doing business as far as the GST is concerned and the proposals uh, include single monthly returns, free accounting software for small businesses, uh, fully auto automated uh, refund uh, mechanisms and more. So, the focus on uh, GST has also been on the technology where e-invoicing will be rolled out from the January 2020. In customs, the main theme has been make in India and less imports. Now, this means that customs duty on the many of the raw materials have been reduced, so that the goods are manufactured in India. Now, on the other hand, custom duties on the final products have been hiked to reduce the imports.
a corporate tax will be reduced to 25 uh, percent from the 30 percent for companies that will have an annual turnover of up to rupees 400 crore as I mentioned. Now, this the finance minister said would include 99.3 percent of the firms in India. She has added that this would boost profits for a large number of companies, but she and uh, experts also say that it is an important step to stimulate investments also. While there was no change uh, in the income tax structure of uh, for most brackets for individuals, uh, Ms. Sitharaman also introduced a 3 percent increase in taxation for some of the highest earners in the Indian society with rupees 2 crore plus of income. Now, in this backdrop, concepts like fiscal deficit, role of government, features of Indian economy, role of budget for the progression of economy can be debated. And of course, the recent uh, liberal announcements by the finance minister like uh, reducing corporate income tax further which were welcomed by the stock markets also could be brought to the notice of our students. Uh, since we are talking about the corporate income tax, let me refresh your memory that the tax rate uh, for all corporates is reduced from 30 percent earlier to 22 percent now. Inclusive of surcharge and education tax, the effective tax rate is uh, down from 34.94 percent to 25.17 percent and this is subject to the condition that the companies will not avail of any exemption or the incentive. Hence, the extent of impact for the companies will depend on specific sectors and exemptions that companies uh, currently enjoy. The second move by the, by the finance minister is to boost the fresh investments in manufacturing and for new companies incorporated on or after 1st October making fresh investment in manufacturing the tax rate has been cut to 15 percent from 25 percent currently uh, inclusive of surcharge and says the tax rate comes to about 17 percent. Now, these companies will also not be required to pay the minimum alternative tax or MAT. Now, I am sure that some of you might be thinking about uh, framing an assignment topic out of the latest amendments made by the finance minister. Uh, Let us talk about uh, banking which is getting uh, tech driven day by day. HDFC bank is now on WhatsApp and giving uh, cashbacks on apps cards to uh, attract millennials. Now, HDFC bank which is India's largest private sector lender is now focusing on WhatsApp for uh, targeting the millennials. Now, uh, not only its customers may check their account and credit card details using the app, but they will also be in a position to enquire about the pre-approved offers and the bank's promotions while any questions could be answered on the WhatsApp. Now, taking technology seriously, uh, HDFC bank is offering attractive discounts and cashback schemes on its various online platforms and credit and debit cards to attract customers and would you believe that it has gone for full front page advertisements about this initiative. Now, 5 percent cashback on shopping while HDFC wallet pays app and its payment gateway smart buy is available. So, to clarify smart buy is actually a platform only for the display of offers provided by merchants to customers of the bank and as we know that the bank is not in business of selling any of such products. Uh, we can discuss with the students about tech changes and response by the banks and emphasize that only by such consistent initiatives by HDFC bank etc. Uh, that has witnessed a rise in the profit every year for the bank. Now, if one feels that PSU banks are lagging behind in technology, wait. Look at SBI. Today, SBI account holders can withdraw money from ATM without using debit card. Now, SBI savings account customers can withdraw cash at the select ATMs of the bank without possessing the debit card and there comes SBI's YONO app. Now, as some may know that already that YONO is a digital banking platform of SBI and the bank customers can use it on their smartphones for undertaking any of the digital transactions including uh, making the online payments. A customer can log into YONO app using the bank's internet login and the password and of course, the account holder can set a 6 digit M pin for doing uh, easier login anytime in the future. Now, once one clicks on the YONO cash, reach the ATM section and enter the amount to be withdrawn, the ATM uh, the subject to a maximum limit of 10,000 rupees. Once done, SBI will then send its customer a YONO cash transaction number on the registered mobile. The number 
and the pin set by the customer could be used for withdrawal of cash any time within 4 hours. What is more, the YONO app also gives the convenience to SBI account holders to locate the nearest YONO cash points. Now, after discussing this, we can ask students to compare PSU and the private banks and their experiences as a customer or a project trainee or employee. So, thus in this module, we came across some business news, uh, their impact and linking them with uh, students learning. And uh, I trust you would find this useful. We would appreciate if you write to us on prime at the rate banastali.in. Thank you very much.